What's up, everybody? Welcome to the second Minute Reviews Top 10. If you missed this morning's Top 10 Best and Worst Movies I Saw in 2022, don't forget to click that little card up there to watch it, or just visit the channel, and it's right there. In this one, I will go over the Top 10 Worst and Best TV Shows I Saw This Year. So, let's get started. Starting at number 10 best show I saw this year was The Peripheral on Prime Video starring Chloe Grace Moritz. Now, the only reason I really watched the show was because I like Chloe Grace Moritz. I think she's incredibly underrated actress. She does not always get the credit she deserves. And what I got was actually a very, very intriguing sci-fi thriller. It was way better than I expected and it became an immediate favorite for me. Coming in at number 10 for the worst shows I saw this year was The Devil's Hour. The Devil's Hour has a very intriguing premise, but ultimately it is confusing as fuck. Number 9 for the best shows I saw this year was also on Prime Video, a lot of Prime so far, Paper Girls. Based off of the comic book of the same name, it follows a group of teenage girls who manage to go back and forth in time. Now, I'd never read the original comic. It's something I want to read, but I've never really had the chance to. So I went into this just kind of knowing the premise, and I ended up absolutely loving this show. Everybody involved is fantastic, and it's such a great premise that I really, really wanted a season two, especially the way it ended with that cliffhanger, but fucking Prime canceled it. Probably in favor because they spent so much goddamn money on the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. But anyway, number nine worst shows I saw this year was on, actually I think this was also on Prime. <laughs> Jesus Christ, a lot of Prime. The English. Now, The English isn't actually that bad of a show. I recently went back and I rewatched it. Uh, Emily Blunt is fucking fantastic in this show. The main issue I have with it is that it is boring as fuck. Like, there were times where I almost fell asleep watching this show. Like, it's great storytelling, but it's just so slow moving and boring. I just. I could not get into it. Number eight best goes to Peacemaker on HBO Max. John Cena, who is best known as a professional wrestler for WWE, you know, when he started acting, it was like, oh my God, please stop. But when he was cast in James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, he was one of the highlights. He found a character that works for him. And I'm so glad Gunn turned it into a TV show because it was bat shit crazy, but in the best possible way. The worst number eight show I saw this year was The Crown Season 5. Now, Elizabeth Debicki, the absolute highlight of Season 5 as Princess Diana, she is, without a doubt, the best part of the show. She surpassed Emma Corrin's performance, in my opinion, from season four. But my problem with this season, and why it ends up on the worst list, is that it just was not compelling. Other than the constant bickering between Diana and Charles and the impending divorce, which we knew was happening, absolutely nothing interesting happened all season. Number seven, best TV show goes to HBO's House of the Dragon. Game of Thrones will go down in history as one of the greatest TV shows ever produced, but it will also go down in history as having one of the worst final seasons in TV history. So when House of the Dragon was announced and eventually released, I was extremely, extremely worried because it's like, oh my God, they fucked up the final season of Game of Thrones so bad. Are they going to screw up this? The answer is no, they did not. House of the Dragon is great. It's a, it's a it's kind of a slow start, but once it gets going, it gets going. Number seven worst goes to Netflix's The Midnight Club. 
I went into the show thinking it was going to be something completely different. Um, what I basically got was a group of dying kids who, that's the best way I can describe this, because they're dying, they're hallucinating like monsters and shit. And it's just, the show is just so depressing. It's really hard to get into. Number six for the best goes to the latest season of Beavis and Butthead on Paramount+. Plus. And right now it sits as my most watched review at, as, as of this recording, 19,000 views. So thank you. This current season of Beavis and Butthead proves that Mike Judge, his humor, as, I'm going to steal a comment from one of the people that commented on my video, his humor ages like a fine wine. And it just got better over time. You would not think that Beavis and Butted would still work in 2022, but they do. Number six for the worst goes to The Watcher, which has a really good cast. It's just, there's so many plot threads. Like, there's this happening, and then there's this happening, and then that's happening, and then that's happening. And the majority of them have zero closure it, it makes for just a bullshit show number five for the best goes to stranger things four stranger things continues to prove that netflix they know how to produce horror well for the most part there's something on the worst list that's a horror netflix show but since season one uh, Stranger Things has just been fucking awesome. And seriously, Eddie, Master of Puppets, come on. The worst number five show I saw this year was The Mighty Ducks Game Changers Season 2. Basically, it just had zero heart. All the fun from Season 1, they balled it up and they threw it on the ice, and then they drove it over with a Samboni. Because this sh season two was just not fun. It had no heart. It's just, compared to season one, it fucking sucked. Number four best goes to Only Murders in the Building. Now, I downloaded Hulu, a free trial, to watch Prey. It was to watch Prey. And I ended up watching Only Murders in the Building because I fucking love Steve Martin and Martin Short. And you know what? I fucking love Selena Gomez now, too. This show absolutely blew me away. It is hysterical. It is dramatic. It is emotional. Martin and Short and Gomez, them together, like, you wouldn't think it would work because of the massive generational gap, but they are perfect together and it makes for an amazing show the number four worst show i saw this year was fucking lock and key season three which was the final season and god damn it i just want to fucking slap Bodie upside the head still still ever since season one i've wanted to smack fucking Bodie so hard just punch him in the face Throw him in the, in the fucking well, because that kid is an idiot. Most of the problems this family goes through is because of Bodie. If they just locked this kid in his room, this entire show could have been done in one season. Number three for the best goes to Wednesday. What can I say about Wednesday that I did not say in my initial review? It's fucking amazing. Jenna Ortega is an absolute goddess as Wednesday Adams, the dance has become a viral sensation. She has become a viral sensation. She's been everywhere over the last like year and a half. And this only solidifies her as a fucking star. The show, it felt like old school Tim Burton, which it helps that he uh, developed the show and directed the first four episodes. And it's just, I need season two like immediately. The third worst show I saw this year goes to the Santa Clauses. <sighs> this was... This was just dumb. <laughs> the show was dumb. I had 
some slight hopes because Tim Allen actually returned to play Scott Calvin slash Santa Claus, but just this show is so stupid. The second best TV show I saw this year was Netflix's The Sandman. It was without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, without even questioning it, there's no arguments. It is the most faithful comic book adaptation ever. Tom Sturbridge was the perfect casting as Morbius and just the show itself follows the comics so well it makes the show fucking perfect. The number two worst show this year from Netflix, Resident Evil. Uh, this show was... Oh my god, this... Uh, this show just pissed me off. Other than a few of the characters, this had absolutely nothing to do with the Resident Evil franchise. With the Resident Evil name, really. It was Resident Evil in name only. Much like the Uncharted movie was Uncharted in name only. This is just, they just made a random ass show with zombies and named it Resident Evil. And it was just a fucking mess from beginning to end. And the number one worst show I saw this year, also from Netflix, Blockbuster. This, man, ugh, this was painfully, painfully unfunny. Like, it hurt. It was so unfunny. I feel like it was completely on purpose, just as a fuck you to Blockbuster, because Blockbuster originally had the option of buying Netflix, and they said no. And look what happened. The rest is history. Blockbuster is dead. Netflix reigns supreme. But this show is just legitimately fucking bad. So, what was the best show I saw this year? On traditional TV, Better Call Saul. What can I say that I didn't say in my original review, or that somebody else didn't say on YouTube, or that somebody else didn't say in a written review? Better Call Saul, the final season, was perfection. From the first episode to the final episode to the performances of everybody involved it was just perfect and as soon as the credits rolled in that final episode man i still did not want it to end i wanted more man i wanted more but i knew that it had to end and just the way it ended much like breaking bad it ended perfectly how many times did I say perfectly during this? Doesn't matter. It, that's how perfect Better Call Saul was. Did you agree with my list? What were your favorite shows of the year? What were your least favorite shows of the year? Feel free to leave a comment with your favorite and least favorite shows you saw in 2022. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to see more. And I will see you next time.